with the drive. We're so thankful that we have this hour to spend with you, hopefully helping you fuel your life. On the drive, we believe it's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit, that ultimately creates the best life that you live. Uh, normally, I start off the show with a mindful minute before we introduce our guest, but we've got a jam-packed hour, and there's so much that I want to share with you today. I'm going to go right into it. If you've got my newsletter, we're talking about why it's important to reinvent yourself every five years and why constant learning is one of the best tools. And there's no greater person to help us with that today than my friend James Mape, author, business speaker, performer, actor, and an actual incredibly inspiring person. Welcome, James. Well, thank you for thank having you me Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> I'm so thankful welcome. for your time today. So in my newsletter out to my guests and some of the talks that you and I had before you coming on, we were talking about something we shared in common. Um, I have had many reinventions. And as a matter of fact, you inspired me for the most recent invention or evolution that I'm in in my career right now. But many times we were told, you're the jack of all trades, master of none. And I want you to tell our audience today what your thoughts are on that crazy comment. Well, I'll go back to my mother who said I was so full of interest as a child from painting and acting and uh, erector sets and this and that. She said, I wonder what you're going to end up doing. So I took the equivalency test or whatever it is. I was going to be a chef. I was going to be a veterinarian. I was going to be an actor. And I think there were two other things. And she said, that doesn't help much, does it? <laughs> so she said, well, one day you'll settle down and you will choose one career. So, I have never settled down. I have constantly reinvented myself. The difference is I've never let go of anything that I did. Right, right? and I think that's an important thing, right? You've built your career one yes. building block onto the next. It's not like it was fragmented. So before we launch into how we're gonna help our viewers today, tell us about your background because it, I didn't uh, serve you justice with just four things. <laughs> I, need to, I need everyone to know, I mean, you're pretty famous. Well, I don't know about that. <clears throat> My wife would say infamous. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give I'm going to give the mixmaster version of my life and my career. Okay, <laughs> all right, go for it. Uh, okay, I, w I got my master's in theater, undergraduate in psychology, uh -huh. and I launched out of there as a technical director for a wonderful Las Vegas pianist called uh, Roger Williams. Uh -huh. And from there, I decided I had to get in regional theater. Uh -huh. So I ended up taking a job at the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival, sleeping under a stage. Wow. Making $50 a week. And one of the lead actors found me and said, what are you doing under there? So I'm sleeping under there and I'm acting and I'm designing and I'm directing a children's show. He said, nah, come, how much you paying? How much you make? 50 bucks. He said, give me 40 bucks and I'll give you a room. <gasps> and he became one of my lifelong friends, one of the, a great agent, a literary agent uh, by the name of Ned Levitt. And then I went down for a year in New Orleans with June Havoc's Theater. Uh -huh. And I came back to do soap operas and I was interested in hypnosis. So, so I started to study uh, clinical hypnosis and that was kind of broken up by uh, taking a job on a three month cruise around the world producing, directing, and designing six musical comedies. So what made you get interested in hypnosis when you were so knee deep in theater? I will, I will tell you. When I was down with June Havoc's Theater, uh -huh. a New Orleans rep company, she had a hypnotist in as a fundraiser. Okay. Right? His name was Sam Vine. He was very big on cruise ships and the Catskills. So I went in and I saw this and it upset me so much. It upset uh, you? I thought, yes, oh, well, I'm from Illinois. Hypnosis. <laughs> Yow. So, <laughs> so, so I'm going, I'm going, what are these people doing? They got to be pretending. And then my girlfriend ended up, that really upset me. So I left and I came back and I left and I came back and I left and I never forgot it. Isn't that it, something? Yep, and so that led me into when I came to New York to start talking about it. You know how, how things happen. We, I don't know about the law of attraction, but things happen for a reason. And Serendipitously, I, exactly. so to speak. So I met someone who introduced me to a very famous uh, hypnotist by the name of Harry Aarons, and he saw something in me. So he took me for six years as mm -hmm. a clinician. So I established the New York Hypnosis Center in 1973. Which but is I, still pretty famous. The, <laughs> I went... <laughs> Still pretty famous. I went on this world cruise where I saw a mind reading act, a mm -hmm. magician, and I went, whoa, 
So as soon as I got back, I'm doing hypnosis, I'm learning magic, and then I said, you know, I would like to put together a show. There's only two people in the United States doing a credible hypnosis, not a club act, not a comedy act, a thinking person's hypnosis show. So I created a journey into the imagination. Yes. Using my background as theater, it's a space journey from blast off to touchdown. Uh -huh. I've done it up at UConn for 30, about 2,800 shows, and on Broadway and Lincoln Center. And so that show launched me into workshops because everybody would say, well, wow, can I learn? I said, what do you need? And I, they said, do you have a workshop? I said, yes. I went home and I went, hmm, I don't have a workshop. Let me mix one of those up. Yeah. So yeah. that became positive self-image training. Mm -hmm. And so I started going out and do two-day residencies, which in fact got me more hypnosis clients in New York. And that morphed into a workshop called Choices. And then in 1982, my manager of 37 years, he said, you've got to come in the corporate field. I said, no, I don't like business. I, why, why do I want to do that? He said, well, two reasons. <laughs> One, you're having a lot of fun, and two, it pays a lot of money. Right, no, I certainly. said, you know, but I've never done anything for money. Right. He said, I'm going to manage you. You're doing this. First job with PepsiCo, 1982, created Quantum Leap Thinking. Mm. In addition to all these other things, movie now and then, started going around the world many that, times. Right, and so I did a little uh, a stint on social media for you before you came on. So where was Star Trek and Merv Griffin in all the midst of this and Red Skeleton that I read about? Well, okay, let's go back to Merv Griffin. I, I, was, uh, I auditioned for the Magic Castle in 1975. I, uh, and I, I, uh, Merv Griffin heard about me. So I went on Merv Griffin, I went on Mike Douglas, I did all these talk shows, Bending Keys. That's what I was gonna say, did yes. you actually bend something? Oh yes. Yeah. Wow. In other people's hands. It was very cool. That is very um, cool. And then in 1977, I won the first Campus Entertainer of the Year Award. Uh-huh. I saw that. And Red Skelton presented it. And also, Red Skelton was one of my wife's godfathers, to Milton Berle and Red Skelton. Wow. And so, I brought that up, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> no dummy me. <laughs> right. so, he, so he took me uh, aside and gave me a piece of advice. His son had passed. Oh, there he is. And, <laughs> Oh, Merv was a corker, I got to tell you. Uh, he, was, he was very supportive, very supportive. Uh, so, and back then, I mean, bending keys on Merv Griffin might have a been a big, stretch for Merv. It, a little bit? A li you know, well, he knew magic, yeah. and he knew, <clears throat> he was curious. Yeah. He was, he didn't achieve this greatness by being a coward. Yeah. He would try everything. That's true, and he, and he, he had a great sense of humor. He had a he had, funny man. Yeah, a great All sense of humor. All these guys did. Uh, so, so the 1977 was Campus Entertainer of the Year, and of course that that launched the show even more and launched more seminars. Then the corporate, and then I wrote a book in 1995, well, published in '96, called Quantum Leap Thinking: An Owner's Guide to the Mind. Then I sent that to the top 50 people I wanted to meet in the United States. You just sent it cold turkey. The cold turkey. Yeah. And one of those, one day, my somebody called my office and said. Uh, may I speak to James Mapes about his book? And, and my assistant said, who is this? She said, he said, oh, it's Tony Hopkins. And she said, come on, who, they, she knows yeah. all my yeah. actor buddies clowning around. She hung up the phone. He called three times. <laughs> she hung and the up third on time Anthony says, don't hang up on me. I want to talk to James Mapes. So Anthony Hopkins calls me at home. We became friends. In fact, he coached me on the last big film I did called The Wicker Tree. Wow. And so we're, we're and, and some other people. So that that book uh, also spurred the corporate, and then I created transformational coaching, which is, I love private coaching, and, uh, and then I had a, a physical thing about seven years ago, and that prompted me into creating a pre-op, post-op patient program. Which it's we're going to spend some yeah. time on in segment <clears> three. <throat> in that, yes. right, and then out of that, I, I, I started doing the wellness, which I think you saw at the library. Yes, I, I did saw. a TEDx talk, uh, harnessing the imagination. Everything's about the imagination, which right. we'll get to. And now, as we speak, I launched uh, my new first show in 30 years, which you were at. Yeah, my husband and uh, my daughter, yes. we attended in Norwalk. It was called, awesome. Called Master of the Imagination. And my new book's coming out in October called Imagine That. It's 14-year project of love. So we started when we opened about how it's okay to be the you know, the master of many trades. I don't think it's, you know, 
for me, I think my career, and certainly yours sounds like, you've built one step building block onto the next. For people that are a little afraid, and say, oh my God, only James can do that. I couldn't do that. What would you tell them? Well, I first tell them I have ADHD and I have dyslexia. And, uh, and I don't like people telling me what I can and cannot do. And any voice in any of your heads <laughs> isn't your voice. Right. It's a voice from your past. It could be your parents, it could be your teacher. You can't do that, you can't. You can't do more than one thing. You've got to focus on one thing. Huh. Both of us coach. And so my entire coaching career starting in 1973, I've dealt with people who have self-limiting beliefs that are old voices of the past. So I would say you got one life to live, rather regardless of your uh, spirituality, uh, you're going to, you know, Ask yourself the question, how long am I going to think I'm going to live? It's a right. good question. It's scary. And then look at the number of years and how do I want to spend that time? You know. So reinventing yourself means, to, to me, the difference between the word transformation and change. Yes. Change is a terrible word because you've got to change. You've got, no, but by the way, you've got to lose weight. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Nobody's going to do it because they, the first thing that comes up, which we'll talk about with change, is what am I going to lose? your subconscious, so it wants to hold on. So it, it transformation means mm. that you are okay the way you are, and everybody's going, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, right? You gotta get past that. You are okay the way you are, and you grow outwards with wisdom, tools, <clears throat> uh, knowledge from there, mm -hmm. and then suddenly this part that you were trying to change and couldn't starts to take care of itself. You know? So what's the first step to that transformation that you're talking about? Because, yes, you have to get past the voices that say, when we make a little joke on the show, I say no one can should on anyone. Don't should on yourselves sure. and don't should on anyone else. So how do you get past, because that's usually the hurdle, because those voices drag you back in. It is, and, and everything begins with a question. Yes. Any knowledge, right? Yeah. So the first question is, if you had no fear, what would you do? If I had no fear, what would I do? What would you do? I am doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a massive loan out to hire a publicist for my book. That's a pretty scary deal. Uh, but you know, I, I ask the question all the time. I mean, I made a video on this, on risk taking, and my greatest fear at that time was skydiving, heights, period. Right. So what do I do? I hire the crew from Oprah Winfrey's show. I hire, I go out to Paris Valley in Southern California. I hire camera crews, I hire everybody and I made a 10 minute video on taking risks where I had to jump out of a plane. And I had to express my fear all the way through it. What nobody saw in the final product is my two camera people jumped out of the plane and wow. I go, you see me go, oh God, oh dear, oh dear. And then it cuts to me breaking through and going out. What really happened was, oh God, and I passed out and it cost more money because we had to land the plane, pick up the two camera people and bring and them back up. back up and I said to myself, when I got up to the edge, I said, I'm investing so much in this that if I don't do it, I'm gonna kill myself. So <laughs> jump and hope for the best. And it, the minute I got out and I was floating, I was, a, I was high for two weeks. <clears throat> That's a, okay, so from Oprah's crew to someone that lives locally that maybe can't hire that crew, what can they do to break through that fear? What's a small risk that you can take? Yeah, what is the small risk? What's, and the question is, what's the worst that can happen, and am I willing to have it happen? If you're not, you're not going to grow. So start small. Great. Yeah. Write down a small, you know, the, the small goal, this goal may be making a phone call, yeah. having a lunch date, telling your spouse something that you haven't had the courage to say in a loving way, without blame, never blame. Just say, you know, when I'm limited or self-limited, this is how, what, how I feel. And we want all of us to feel big and be at our best. Not too babbly, you know, not too crazy. So start small. That builds, that changes your brain, by the way. That changes your brain. You can change your brain in five hours. Really? It absolutely change So your brain. when we come back, everyone, we're going to be talking about changing our brain, <laughs> making the invisible visible, and the power of your imagination with my friend James Mapes. This is going to be a great, uh, stay tuned, come right back. Don't miss a minute. <laughs> Denise DiRigoli here every Tuesday live on the HN Network with The Drive. It's how you feel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates your best life. Thanks so much, James. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. 
New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport, my commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at TripleSClean.com or 203-847-8. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. You're watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly one million people have watched our live sports, news, and entertainment programming since the network launched in August 2015. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. There are many ways to reinvent yourself, and we're learning so many things today with our guest James Mape, the master of the imagination. We're going to talk about how you can use your imagination and your mind <laughs> to bring things to fruition in your life. Yes. So we were just talking about taking risks and how you can change your mind in five hours. Or less. Or less. So yeah. how can I change well, my mind <clears throat> in five hours? Or less? I love the word imagination. I've adopted the term imaginologist because the imagination is our playground. Now, imagination is not creativity. Yeah, right? I agree. It's when you focus that wild, I call it the wild child, because it can go to the dark side, it can go to fear, it can go to worry and doubt, or it can create wonderful things. So when you apply your imagination, you can create something new. And truly, you know, this has been around forever, it's been back in the sleep temples of Egypt, is if you can create a future vision that's realistic, mm -hmm. uh, a mental movie, that's not too crazy, I mean, you're not going to be a millionaire in a year, all that's, you know, realistic, otherwise the subconscious rejects it, and it's emotionally based. A lot of people don't understand that if you visualize, it has to be clear, it has to be precise, it has to be realistic, mm -hmm. and it has to have a strong emotion because that's what moves the subconscious. Okay, stay there for a second. <clears throat> strong emotion, emotionally based, really tell us what that means. Well, it means if, if I envision myself, um, if I envision my book in the future, I am doing a book signing at Barnes & Noble in New York, and I am turned on, and people are happy, and I'm, you know, so I'm, I'm happy, I'm, I'm elevated, I'm, uh, so, and, and, you know, I got to be careful because if fear creeps in, that's also a strong emotional base. Right. So it's a realistic visualization right. of where your book might land. It's not the first bus stop isn't Dubai. No. Right. Realistic. It's realistic. Uh, it's possible. It could be in Dubai. Well, but the first I, bus stop, maybe not. I did it for a film with my name up on the screen, and I did it for 10 years and it happened and it didn't happen by accident. Chance favors the prepared mind. Absolutely. Right. So 
you're saying sometimes it takes longer. It could take 10 years. It could take 10 years, but start small. Start small. Start small because you, every single human being needs to gain self-confidence. Once you know that it works, you're on your way. Okay, so how can we gain self-confidence and how can we get to that point where we can make that little realistic movie and feel the emotion? Well, let's start with the imagination. Okay, let's go. All right, go. let's do it. Let's do it, let's with, do your, it. With, your, with your audience. Okay. So I'm about to do my least favorite demonstration of the imagination, and I would like you to play along with me. So it's very simple. I have a lemon, and in a moment, <laughs> I'm going to bite this lemon. And he what has I would a like, lemon. What I want you to do And it's real. This is, is not to, a prop. This is not a prop. Uh, I want you to imagine that you have a lemon, that you're holding a lemon. Okay. And in order to do that, like any visualization, you have to recall what a lemon is. What makes a lemon a lemon? Uh, the same way as what makes your goals realistic. So you know it's yellow, it has a shape, it has a, 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 a rough texture, it has, it has a tart smell, and it has... Seeds. You know, it has, you know, I'll be picking those out of my teeth. It has <laughs> juice. So I'm going to count to three, I'm going to bite this lemon. I want you to pretend, imagine, visualize that you're biting your lemon. Oh, Ready? No. One, two, three. <laughs> Put it in your mouth. <laughs> Just a moment, please. All right, a second. This was not so, pre recorded, <clears throat> friends. So the, que <laughs> the question is did you have some kind of a response? My bet is let her know. My yeah. bet is you did. Tweet me, please. If you did, let me tell you, this is the, this is a miracle of the mind. Because what you just did mm -hmm. is created something out of nothing. Out of pure imagination, you created a biochemical change in your body, no different than lowering your heart rate, lowering your blood pressure, uh, reducing your stress. You, you, you simply cannot be stressed if you are recalling the most relaxing place outdoors you've ever been. So once we learn these kinds of skills, we apply the imagination. Right. And then, uh, and then the miracles begin to happen. Because by the way, you do this all the time anyhow. Right, you put yourself, I mean, I was tasting that lemon right along with you. So <laughs> yes, and that's, how, that's how powerful that one exercise is. It is. And, it's, it, and from here, all you have to do is extrapolate and you understand the power of visualization. You, you created a vision in your mind okay. of a lemon. You, I, I gave you the parts of it, you yeah. know, like my, my, my signing a book. I mean, that isn't just some made up thing. I see the table. <laughs> right. You know, I see the sign behind me. I see it. You know I what you're wearing. It. Right. Right. Well, I do know what I'm wearing, actually. <laughs> and, and so I go through every detail and I add the emotion into that. Right. Once you visualize, you automatically start to change your brain. So is there... This is a mild form of hypnosis, by the way. It sure was. Yes. That's, so the people understand that. If you had a response, you've achieved the first of the four stages of hypnosis. So uh, before I get off onto hypnosis, because I do have a few questions there, for someone that's wanting to reinvent themselves, and they're thinking, okay, I tried that, and I could sense the lemon, but I'm stuck in my job, or I'm stuck in my marriage. I'm not stuck in my marriage, guys, so don't freak out. Uh, but I'm stuck in whatever it is okay. I'm stuck in. It, what can I do? Like, I don't, I don't see that visualization, James. I, I don't know what that okay, is. How some, can we help some, them? Number one, some people do not see clear pictures like a movie screen, but mm -hmm. everybody can feel emotions. Now, right. So what can you do right now? Yeah. What you can do right now, I'm going to give you an exercise I call the Ben Franklin exercise because I got this idea from reading a bio of Ben Franklin. The first thing, whenever you're stressed or to start straight, you know, getting your mind clear, write down everything that vexes your spirit, everything that it's upset you. And I mean everything. You don't show this to anyone. Yeah, please don't show it to So it could be your boss, your this, your that, myself, whatever it is, you, you write until there's nothing left to write. Then you take a breath, have a sip of water, go back and cross everything out that you have no control over. Now, what you have just done is let go a lot of stuff that you worry about because I think the majority of people spend their lives trying to control the uncontrollable. So now you, get, now you get rid of what you can't control. Now go back and write a baby step that you can do for each of these. So you don't even have to do the steps, by the by. 
you have now freed yourself up. Wow, that was a great piece of advice for everybody that's listening. If you did that simple exercise every day, I think you'd reduce your stress dramatically. You would, when, and whenever you get stressed, you right. do it. Because it's the way the mind works. It isn't some mumble jumbo, it works. And the second thing people can do is, and I love doing this with private clients, I have them write down the five most important values to you. Right, we talked about doing right? the values. So right? you write down, I, so, and then after you write them down, don't think about them, then you go back and say, okay, if I, if I had to keep one of these for eternity, which one would I keep? So you start, at the, you start with the first one, which one is hard. You Give just, me some sample yeah. values that uh, you hear. Oh, there's about 50 of them plus. Uh, it could be, let's go with uh, money, honesty, integrity, uh, freedom, sex, fun. Uh, almost anything you name is a value. Right. My top three values of my life that run my life, and when, you go, when I go against these values, I get sad. And I know if I'm sad, I don't logically think. When I go back and I re- align myself. So my top three values, love, yeah, right? And we'll talk a little about love and fear. Uh, second is freedom. Yeah, I right? like freedom too. Because, and that means I'm, I'm married to a wonderful wife, you know, we, you want to go a couple days and three days, you do what you want to do. Life is short. Yeah. I love you. I trust you. Third is fun. Those yeah. are my top three. And if, if I don't have fun and I don't feel freedom, in other words, I don't like, bullies are I have no tolerance. I have, and and especially with men, uh, you know. If I t somebody said, "Would you rather speak to a group of men or women?" Hey, I'll take the women any day, but I also would like 50/50 because there's a dynamic there that happens. So okay, so the values. Once you are clear on your top values, now you've got to be careful not to. Pro you don't project your values on someone else. See, right. we do this all the time. If we don't think about our thinking, what we do is say, my top value is, uh, is love. Well, then yours should be. Right. You know? And then, but and that's if, when we say don't shoot on anyone. Yep. Right? And, and if you want to help people motivate themselves, help them discover their values. If you want to motivate them, ask questions. Then you start to say, oh, wow, the number one value is creativity. Wow. How can I help this person be creative and still get their job done? Right. Right. So you can shift your own work that you may not like. In your mind, using your values, you can be accountable for your happiness. Interesting. Yep. Okay, so now we've got the values. We have an, an understanding of what they are. Now what are we doing? All right, well then I think we need to talk about fear. Okay, let's talk about fear. <laughs> because I believe, I believe there are only two emotions in life, love and fear. fear, right? And so you give me an emotion, it'll go in one of those two categories. The worst fear is guilt. But the main fears are rejection, change, success, failure, commitment, and poverty. Now, here's, here's the issue with fear. If you don't know how to manage your fear, yes. your fear will manage you. For example, let's suppose that, and by the way, being afraid of rejection is not an issue. Everybody's afraid of rejection. Right. But if it controls you, if it runs your choices of life, Here's what we'll do if, say, uh, this is the easiest one to understand. I am run by the fear of rejection, but I won't admit it. So here's what I'm going to do in life. I will either push you away yeah. before you push me away. Yes. Or I will become jealous. That's the other side. Clinging and yeah. jealous. Or I will be a bully. So, so, or I'll just be nothing. I'll, 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 I'll uh, seclude myself, which means... The fear has already gotten me. Right. Right? Because I think, logically, if I don't interact with people, I'm safe. But you aren't. Because this is called the great trickster. That's what I call fear. Because if you are a victim of fear, fear will always win. You will never win. So how do people, people that need the most help, probably aren't realistic to how much fear they have. Right? Well, it's true. And part of it is having the courage to look inside. And there are a couple things you can do. Right. Once you start to discover this, you, the first people go, oh my, oh. Well, I'm not going to reinvent mm. myself. It's well, too much. Well, yeah. It's too much. But the questions to ask, one I've already put out, what's the worst that can happen and am I willing to have it happen? Right. The second two questions or one question that's a big question. People never think about this. What's the payoff for me having the fear? That's critical. Because that means... Who do I get to avoid speaking to or confronting? Or what do I avoid doing? Doing. Right. right. So, so what's the payoff? Right. Because once you go, what's, oh, wow, really? Then you got to get rid of guilt because that's just more fear, right? Right. <laughs> 
So wow. those, those questions help people break through fears. So in, in reinventing yourself, and we're just about to go to a break, every five years, is it necessary every five years? Or is oh, it when it no. comes up? I, I picked that because I find it works for me. I find it works for my clients. I find people that reinvent themselves on a continuous basis means you learn more, you're alive more, you're a little afraid more. That's okay. Deli it's called delicious fear. There are three kinds of fear. Which mm. you know, delicious fear is 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 okay. Uh, otherwise, you, so it doesn't mean you have to dump everything. I didn't. Right. You know. Well, that's what we've been talking about: bringing it all along and how it builds and builds. I love the idea of transforming, and I love the idea of every so many years. Five fits for me as well. So I like that very much. Yeah. I and I hope that everyone that is tuned in today is learning something fantastic from our conversation about transformation, uh, visualizing, imagining, and using. It starts all starts with your mind. Tune in. We're going to talk about the power of thought and healing when we come back in our final segment. Denise DiGregoli live here on the HN Network every Tuesday. We're so thankful you've joined us, and we hope that you've enjoyed this so far. Come right back. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. Keep your future star active and happy this summer at Future Stars Sports Academy Camps and Clinics. The Academy is offering sessions throughout Fairfield County. Sign up for a week of basketball, cheerleading, football, or a multi-sports camp. At Future Stars Academy, children learn the fundamentals while under the supervision of qualified coaches. And what sets the Academy apart is its special Lessons of Life sessions, teaching values and focusing on building self-esteem, friendships, and honesty. Located at Sports Center Connecticut in Shelton and in Sports and Trumbull, register online at futurestarsportsacademy.com. Warm weather, light breezes, boats are in the water. There's no better place to celebrate summer than the Dock Shop. Whether in Darien at 51 Tokenique Road or Westport at 609 Riverside Avenue, the Dock Shop is where you'll find everything you need to kick off summer. From the latest summer apparel to the newest fishing tackle, the Dock Shop will help you get the most out of your next beach day or harbor cruise. At the Dock Shop, you'll find a wonderful selection of items made in the USA and right here in New England, all with a distinct nautical flair. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the coastal lifestyle, this is a unique place to shop. DockShop.com. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. When I first met James May, one of my programs was being evaluated to be part of a learning online school. And I had a lot of fear. I wasn't sure that I could do it. And I had a lot of uh, trepidation. And they suggested that I call James. And I, and I wasn't sure. And you spoke to me. And you were like, I hear fear in your voice. No, I can't. That's why I remember the conversation. I hear fear in your voice. And I was like, oh, he found me out. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, just do it. That's right. Yeah. Just do it. And I think you were probably saying that long before Nike was saying that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what's really near and dear to uh, my heart is my mom had uh, an aortic aneurysm, and she had a lot of fear in and around her surgery that just happened in February. You know, it happened last June. And you said something very powerful to me. You said, you know, it all starts with the process of healing, and that begins with using your thought. 
Yes. And tell me about that because there are so many people that go into these, including yourself, like life or death situations that pop up out of the blue that create such fear in their life and also almost immobilizes them going forward. Tell me about this, um, can you guys see it? Patient pre-op, post-op healing therapy that Yale has endorsed. I think it's critical. Yeah. Uh, well, the, you know, we're talking about moving forward and visioning and all this stuff, but <clears throat> sometimes life gets in your way. Right. And so my story is very simple. I was shooting a film in Scotland, and it was very physical, very physically active, 16 hours a day. I had a blast. I had was coached by the best dialect coach in the world, taught to do physical stuff. And I, and I was getting my second belt in a black belt in karate. I get back to Connecticut, I get depressed, and I don't get depressed. Well, I have waves, but you know, it's, 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 that's bad. Three days of depression, I said to my wife, I'm going to go to my doctor and just talk to him. Maybe there's a pill. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he examines me, listens to my heart, sends me across the street to my cardiologist. They do an echocardiogram. That night I am going out uh, for lobsters and martinis with one of my old booking agents. And it was two minutes to six in Norwalk, my cell phone rings, he hasn't arrived. I listen, it's my cardiologist who basically, he knows what a stubborn guy I am. He said, basically, at least this is what I heard, you have less than two weeks to live. Wow. All right, you, and you have to listen to me. You have an aortic aneurysm and it's about to burst. Wow. You have got to do it. So I had three martinis and uh, <laughs> had to go home and tell my wife. And after freaking out for three days, I said to me, I said, you know, the only way I'm going to manage this mm -hmm. is to, to, to create something out of this to help other people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started to research. And I started to research. My fourth day in ICU, and I was in for 10 days because uh, it burst on the table. And I started to croak questions to the head nurses. And my first question that started this wonderful program is, do you think attitude makes a difference? Do you think attitude makes a difference? <laughs> uh, and, and my wife's taking notes, right? Because she's a, a journalist. So I, so they look at me like I, no one's ever asked us that. Yes, let me tell you a story. And I ended up afterwards interviewing about 100 senior nurses. And the story is basically this. People who should not have had a problem, yeah. that had a problem, were those people who were not grateful, who were, did, did not thank us, who argued with their uh, relatives when they came in and were just full of fear that ruled them. People that did not have problems, that should have had problems, and heal faster were those who were grateful, they had a great attitude, they, they, were, you know, they had great support system, so what I started to do is assemble wow. steps. Mm -hmm. So this is two CDs. The first is like a 46 minute seminar that mm -hmm. you listen to with your advocate, which you must have an advocate. And the second CD are two 20 minute processes. You listen to twice a day before surgery mm -hmm. and uh, for a week, at least a week. And then you switch and you do the one after. Now we've done brain, back, heart, neck, and here's what it does. And it so far it hasn't failed. I'm not, you know, to, it takes away all fear before surgery. And this is, pro somebody said to me, do you have to believe in this to, uh, to have it work? I said, no, you just listen. That's where your brain's gonna listen to it, your subconscious. So it takes away all fear before surgery. So you're not shooting out cortisol and adrenaline and all that stuff, makes surgery go better. It takes blood flow away from the point of incision at the wow. beginning of surgery and brings it back at the end. And like my wife didn't have to use a drain in her second hip operation, nor do most people that do this. 40% less narcotics, so it manages your pain, and healing 25% faster because it gives you self-confidence. It a lot. So it's it's all based all based in brain science, but it's I put this together in a way that's easy for people to use. And it's been endorsed by Yale New Haven. It's been endorsed from the head of cardiothoracic surgery. Wow, but yeah, yeah. that is incredible. And so people have come back and said to you, my pain was less, my healing was better. We had someone over to the house, we had a party on Sunday, a very famous author who used this before his knee replacement surgery. And I knew this three days afterwards because he was up out of bed marching mm -hmm. down the hall. And nurses would say, no, you can't be doing this. Well, part, part of the, a question I, I gave the script to a, a, a 
bunch of nurses, uh, uh, maybe a dozen. Uh -huh. And I said, is, did I leave out anything? They said, keep everything the way it is, but we're, here's where we have our problem. When someone comes out of surgery, right. it's hard to get them to stand up or go to the bathroom or take their walk with their IV. Mm -hmm. They're to so full of fear, they don't have self-confidence. So embedded in this is self-confidence. So he ended up scooting down the hall. And, so is this yeah. something they listen to? Is it completely yeah. audio? All, all audio. All audio. All audio. The 46 minute thing, you, you know, it's, inter it's interactive. It explains how the mind works. Uh, if we have time, I'll give you one minute yeah, on this. Okay. Yeah, give me how the mind And works. I would like people at home to listen to this. Uh, subconscious, conscious, right? Yes. But conscious is only 10%. Conscious Period. Is only conscious 10%. is our reasoning, intelligent, able to visualize in the future. That's, mm -hmm. that's our conscious. 10%. We are controlled 90% by our subconscious. So I look at this as we're a very small, intelligent writer, somewhat screwed up, always worrying, always critical, sitting atop a 6,000 pound elephant that is going to do damn well what it wants. That's a visualization yep. in itself. You bet. And yeah. the elephant does not think traditionally. It responds to two things. It goes towards what makes it feel good and runs away from what makes it feel bad. It is the center of our emotions. That's why when you visualize with emotion, it touches the elephant. So we can't control the elephant. I tried a couple times in my life. I can't, and I'm a good writer. Can't control an <laughs> elephant. It's going to go on the path that's most comfortable. Unless you influence it, it is going to do what it wants to do. And mm -hmm. that's why I encourage people to learn all the tools they can to influence their subconscious. Because that's what you're doing with visualization, with managing self-talk. Let's talk about managing self-talk. Let's, self let's do that. Because self-talk is that little voice in your head that you talk to yourself with. Um, you can't do that. Right? Boys wear blue, girls wear pink. Yeah. You shouldn't. You, why are you going to do that? It's why a, are you going to take that risk? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So what I do with private clients is I teach them how to manage the voice. Now, if you try to stop the voice, you're, forget it. It isn't going to work. If you make yourself wrong, it isn't going to work. So how, what can you do? Yeah, what can you do? Okay. So if let's say I, the issue of weight loss. Okay. But I, I say that you're repeating something negative to yourself. And let's say that I had a mind meld with you. Okay. So I could read Denise's mind. Yeah. Right? So every time you had a negative thought, yeah. I'd go whack with a newspaper. I'd say, <laughs> stop it. And guess what? You would stop it. And in the window of that stop, you have, the writer has the ability to reframe the thought, to completely switch the self-talk. So I teach people a method where they're able to recognize when they're doing anything negative, take a breath and say three words. Isn't that interesting? No judgment. So if I say, oh, um, I wonder if, if uh, uh, gee, what if the, 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 the social network part of this PR person, which, which I've done a couple times, they don't get it right, and I go, wow, isn't that interesting? All fair. So I go, of course they will, and you're going to help them do it, because you're really good at social networking. So it's almost like a shift of gears. I mean, it is. The daily drive. It's called reframing. Yeah. That's okay. what it's called. And so that little exercise can change lives. I, I give it as part of, you know, you, I, I did it with a professional golfer. He wanted to get better. Right? He had me go out on the on uh, in Palm Desert with him, hmm. and I, I took a little recorder from Radio Shack with a mic, yeah. and I said, "If I'm going to do this, here's the deal: you've got to say everything out loud that you would normally say to yourself." Wow! So that'd be I, scary I, for well, me. Well, we can't repeat most of what he said, but you jerk, you did it again, blah blah blah, and worse, terrible, terrible stuff. After three holes, he stopped it. We went to the clubhouse. I said, "You're going to listen to this?" No, yes. He listens to him, berate himself, make himself wrong. He said, "Do you have children?" He said, yes, I have two. If you talk to your child like you talk to yourself, what would happen to their creativity and self-confidence? And he goes, it would be dead. I said, do you think there's any difference? So I'm going to teach you how to not stop doing that yet, but how to recognize when you are, ah, oh, isn't that interesting, and then refocus on the goal in a positive way. So, okay, let's, again, I go back to weight loss, okay. right? So uh, gained 10 pounds after an Achilles tendon surgery, cycling 40, 50 miles a week, eating correctly. I know it's a mind thing. I know it's a mind thing. Let me give you There's, an exercise while we're on the air. Okay, let's do It's a killer it. exercise. Let's kill it. Because until, until you change your image of yourself, yes. and you won't do it logically, 
Right. All right. So here's the exercise I do privately with people. Okay. There are, here's a mirror off to your left. It's eight feet by four feet. A mirror off to your right, eight feet by four feet. You look yeah. in the mirror on your right, you see yourself at your worst. You're talking to yourself. You hate yourself. Uh, da, da, da. You feel terrible. You feel disgusted. Now look in the mirror on your right, see yourself with the weight off. Realistically, with the weight off, how do you feel? How do you look? What are you saying? What are you doing? Where are you? Go back to the mirror on the left, see how that negative goes down. Back to the mirror on the right, back to the negative, reach under, pick up a hammer that's under your chair, crash the mirror on your left, get up out of your chair, walk into the mirror on your right so you become the mirror, look down at yourself, and live yourself in that, and you'll start to shift your body. And it, by the way, this has never failed, ever. Wow. And Smoking the same thing. Really? Until you get and see yourself as a non-smoker and believe so this the, is the elephant changes. This is belief. the ugly smoker, fat person. Smelly breath. This smelly and that, breath. Blah, 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 blah. Overweight, can't fit. Right. And this is the nice mirror, non-smoking, not that I smoke. Right, right. Well, well-suited person. Yep. And you have to, you live it in your mind as if. It's The word is as if it's real. And you start to change your brain. And if you don't believe me, just go read a couple books on brain science, you know? I think this applies bringing it full circle to where we started. If you're questioning, should I reinvent myself and why, whether it's five years or ten years, if I think so many of us have these two sides, right? We're, we think Absolutely. we're there, but we want to be there. Right. Whether it's body, career, loved ones, Mentally, physically, et spiritually, emotionally, socially. Right. You have to learn to acknowledge and honor this part of us. And I don't want to use honor in some flight. Just acknowledge it, accept it. It is part of who I am. How can it not be? And then use the mental tools, get rid of it. Keep going in the mirror. Keep going in the mirror. Now, do you recommend to your clients, do they do this five times a day, ten times a day, whenever they think of it? They, like, I make them a recording, and they do it twice a day, minimum, for 30 days. Minimum. Like, I don't take a client. I give five assignments to a private client. If they don't do them, I don't see them again. 30 days, and I'll call them in a week. I'll, you know, they'll call me. They'll email me, question, you know, I'm having a problem here. Good. Well, Pick a different color, pick a different disc, pick a different, you know, what it is. I can't, I, I do what I can to find, uh, be empathetic with a client so I can kind of read their mind uh, as best I can. But sometimes as we start our journey, they, whoa, when one part of a system changes, all parts of a system change. If someone starts to change, mm. who sabotages them more than likely is their best friend or their spouse. Really? Absolutely. Now, why do you say uh, that? I will tell you, because no one likes change. No one likes change. So your spouse might be, or your or your friends might be like, whoa, what's no, going, I'm going on? Uh, what are you, you're seeing a coach? Oh, I, oh, what are you doing? You're perfect. I love you the way you are. Don't change. You don't change. Don't yeah. change. That's what, it's all fear. So you've got to be careful of sabotaging yourself out of guilt mm -hmm. and watching, you know, I had to fire, I had to fire one of my best friends six months ago. It was a miserable process. Wow. Miserable. I had to. I, I couldn't. I could no longer put up with three calls a day. I could no longer oh. hear the negativity, the victim thing, for months on end. And I couldn't help because I tried. I could not do what I do best. Right. And I, and it was hurting me. It was hurting my wife. It was hurting our emotional state. And I said, you know, and when people fire somebody as a friend or whatever, you can't engage them because they're going to use guilt love, anger, everything just to shame. get a two word shame, to get a little response. So if they, you know, no matter, if I engage, and it's hard, it's hard. you know, because if they, wow. I don't answer the phone, they shoot an email anymore, I used to respond, once I engage, they got me back. Right, they hooked you back in. Yep, and that's, that's on me, not on them. That's on you, yeah. yeah. This has been an incredible hour almost. So if we're talking about reinventing, and I know you have a plethora of tools on your website, jamesmape.com, people can coach with you personally. Um, and sign up for my almost monthly, monthly newsletter. Yes. Because the beginning of that news, it's always an article that's impactful like we talk. And at the beginning, I just let people know where I am, uh, when my new book comes out, where, if they want to come locally to the library or something like that. Or see you at Barnes & Noble, yeah. New or York. Or connect for on that Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm, you know, I rock on the social media. So if we were, <laughs> you do. I do. So if we were going to leave the audience with a thought on being mindful for their mind, body, spirit, creating the best lifestyle, what three tips can we leave them with other than call James, which hopefully uh, they might do anyways? Uh, well, uh, I, I think the first is 
to just consider the fact that you have far more control than you think you have. Right? right? That's very powerful. Because until you get that, you are a victim. Right. And once you're a victim, it's, you, it's all over. Two is that you can change your brain in a very short period of time with the proper tools. And there are many ways to get tools. You go on the web, visualization, reframing, all this is there. And the third thing I would say is if not now, when? Awesome. If not now, when? And I like the exercise about writing everything down that irritates you and crossing out what yes, you cannot so, control. Yeah. And it just, it frees you up. It, right there on the spot, it's like putting uh, lubricant in a, in a car, a bike wheel, you know? That's You're, awesome. Yeah. So uh, we saw a show that you're working on, uh, Troy, Ava, and I, which yep. we loved. Are we going to tell the audience that they can see that soon, or is that still in progress? Uh, I, this is called Master of the Imagination. It's kind of a cross between mindful storytelling and uh, intu intuition, verbal, nonverbal communication, and a dash of magic. Yeah, uh, it was awesome. And, and it it's, was awesome, it's fun. everyone. It and was no awesome. And no one does this kind. No one does a show like this. So no. my next step is where to do it. So I'm talking to someone about doing it at the Players Club in New York, which mm -hmm. I'm a member, uh, the National Arts Club in New York. And I'm looking. I will do this for free because Friday night I did this as a benefit, a three a weekend benefit. I created the show. It took me five months. I will do it for free in order to do the show. Yes. Right? I'll help people raise money. Yeah, fundraiser, uh, guys. Yep. And, but James. it has to be a stage. I don't do wander around stuff. I don't do little things at dinner. I don't, don't do, do dinner that. parties. It's a stage show. It is and, a stage uh, show. And, uh, and it raised a lot of money for this group. And it, it's a it's a win-win because I get to refine this, which mm -hmm. it won't be the same show you saw. I know. I can't right? wait to see it again. And then uh, they get the benefit of having me do it. And the book that's coming out October 2016, uh, yes. the name is? Imagine, imagine That, Igniting Your Brain for Creativity and Peak Performance. It is, stands on its own, 305 pages, hardbound, but it has 21 video clips that you can go to of me coaching you. On, online. And yeah, HT, you just go put in a password and you can either read me coaching you or I'll actually coach you from three to six minutes online. So I'm so thankful for your time today. Thank I you hope for having you will me. come back in November and tell us about the book again and Great. maybe do another little stint here on the drive. Thank you. It was a more than a pleasure having you today. <laughs> Thank you for okay. having me. Everyone, it's Denise Di Rigoli of the Drive. It's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates that dynamic lifestyle you live. And I hope you fueled it well today with James. Give us a shout out on Twitter, Twitter Denise Di Rigoli or Han. H-A-N Network CT. Thanks so much. We're going to rerun James next week as I'm going to be on vacation for the 4th of July, chilling out with my family in the Berkshires, and we've got some great guests coming on for the balance of the summer. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks.